Welcome to today's journey of understanding to Tetelestai, the final words of Jesus when he died on the cross. At this point in the journey, you might be asking, if there is a God who created everything, can I know him and does he really have a plan for me? In today's episode, we're going to discover the relationship that you and I can have with the all-knowing, all-powerful God, the one who created you and me. But we need to go back to where it all began. The Bible tells us about that first relationship between God and man. also chooses to personally know us and created us to have a relationship with Him. God wants you to know Him. That is why He has revealed Himself in His Word, the Bible. In Genesis, the first book of the Bible, we read that this relationship was God's plan from the very beginning of time. After creating everything else in our universe, God prepared to make the first man and woman. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. This is what would set humans apart from all the rest of creation, for they would be made in the image of God. Unlike any other creature, the man and woman would not be merely physical, for God would create humans with a spiritual side capable of knowing and loving Him. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. Verses 21 through 25 describe how from Adam's rib, his wife Eve was created. A rib, a place taken from his side as his equal to be beside him, under his arm to be protected by him, next to his heart to be loved by him. God placed Adam and Eve in a beautiful garden called Eden. God had chosen to have a special relationship with humanity. God himself walked and talked with Adam and Eve in that garden. As the one who had given them life, God could have programmed Adam and Eve to automatically do everything he commanded them. But God did not force Adam and Eve to love and obey him. He wanted them to choose to love him, for real love is only love if it is a choice. And this is how God gave Adam and Eve a choice. God had filled the Garden of Eden with delicious fruits of every kind. Right in the very middle of the garden, God planted two unique trees. One was called the Tree of Life. The other was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Adam and Eve could eat freely from the tree of life, but concerning the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, God gave them an important command. You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely die was a simple command with clear consequences. Do not eat from this tree or you will die. Now they had a choice. Would they believe what God said and obey Him? 
or would they reject his authority and eat the forbidden fruit? It was a very serious choice, for God is the author of life. To reject God is to reject life. And if you reject life, then you are choosing death. Wow, a simple choice, life or death. Since the time of the first man and woman, people have had to make the same choice. I've witnessed it throughout my life. My closest friends and even my family have had to make that choice. I love my family. My brother Larry was a great older brother. He died from COVID about a year and a half ago, and I really miss him. When I was just a little boy, I seemed to always get in trouble, but Larry was there to rescue me. But he had a difficult life. We had the same mother, but different fathers. His father was an alcoholic and very abusive. My mother fled the relationship and eventually divorced him. She met and married my father a few years later. Larry struggled in school and could barely read or write. Yet his big heart made up for his lack of skills. And one day he met a girl and fell in love. They planned to get married, but a few weeks before the wedding, she was tragically killed in an automobile accident. It was then that Larry made a decision, one that led him down a dark path. He based his decision on a lie. He thought, nobody loves me. I'm destined for failure. God doesn't care. He turned to alcohol, just like his father did. Larry spent the next few decades of his life drowning in his sorrows and never married. Larry's alcohol addiction made it almost impossible to communicate with him. While studying at the university, I experienced God's love through faith in Jesus, and I wanted Larry to know the same love. I prayed for him and tried to talk to him, but it seemed hopeless until one day. My mother called and said, Sammy, your brother wants to talk to you. My heart sunk as he told me what happened. He said, I was driving home from work the other day and I had been drinking hard, real hard. The police pulled me over and arrested me for driving while drunk and they put me in jail. My heart broke as I listened. I was placed in a cell with a man who was a murderer. Larry, what did you do? Sammy, I called on the name of the Lord. I made a choice. I wanted God. I wanted His way in my life. Jesus took control of my life and He set me free, free from the darkness, free from the alcohol. He gave me life and I love Him. From that day until the day He died, Larry loved God and lived for Him. He never touched a drop of alcohol after that. He was truly set free. He lived for the next 20 years until he died in a relationship with the God who he loved and the God who loved him. He told me, Sammy, I can't speak like you speak, but what Jesus did for you, he did for me too. Would you tell people what Jesus did for me? I prayed with Larry just moments before he stepped into his eternal home. He spent the final two decades of his life with peace in his heart and love in his life. He died having found the true meaning of life, all because one day he made a choice based on one great truth. God loved Larry, just as Adam and Eve made a choice and Larry made a choice. You have a choice to make, emptiness or purpose, life or death. Believe a lie or embrace the truth, it's your choice.